was an, I mean, it was an attempt on my life, but by who specifically, I, I don't know. Though I was threatened uh, before I had left. That they threatened my wife's life and my life, so I can only put two and two together and say that they were kind of pissed at me. After we were caught out when I had the test flight schedule and uh, I brought some friends out to show them the disc test, uh, we got caught out there and the following day I was debriefed down at Indian Springs Air Force Base and um, I was in the room with the security guards that caught us, my supervisor and some other people and uh, some of the security personnel. Uh, yeah, they were essentially grilling me about security and you know how could I possibly bring people out there and uh, I guess I wasn't as responsive as they would like and they got in my face and one of them pulled that sidearm out and, you know just pushed it again. For a very brief time after I left Dennis who was my supervisor did try and make contact with me at the uh, the meeting place was the Union Plaza Hotel and I took a, a friend of mine, Gene Huff, down there, and another friend, uh, a former colleague and scientist from Los Alamos. And we did, uh, we saw him, but I also did recognize some security personnel walking around there from S4. So whether or not it was a setup or what was going on or he was trying to talk to me, we never found out and we left. It just was a, a real strange situation. I never heard from him since. Well, if you want to word the question how are my opinions changed uh, I would say considerably before I was at S4 I was more or less one of the uh, one of the guys that thought you know all these government conspiracy and UFO buffs and things like that were complete lunatics um, I even remember before I was involved there a friend showed me a little newspaper clipping and said John Lear was giving a lecture who was uh, touting that aliens from another world came to Earth and there's 70 different species. And I remember laughing on the phone that this guy had lost his mind. And uh, I was also under the impression that, you know, boy, the government's all for the people and they, you know, you know, they're out here to protect us and all that. You know, after the experiences I had there, uh, everything is completely turned around. You know, the, the government <laughs> is doing everything but uh, looking out for us. I mean, the only thing they're looking out is for themselves. You know, uh, obviously the ET craft do exist. Something had to build them, so there must be aliens. And since there are and the craft are there, there must be some sort of factory and an entire civilization somewhere. And if in fact that is true, and it apparently is, then there must be others actual crafts and technology from another world and uh, that's probably the most important event in history. It kind of moved from science fiction into reality in my mind and uh, it really just I guess opened my eyes. The big thing is whether or not we can duplicate them. I mean, if we can understand what a device is or how something operates or what its physical makeup is that's great but if we can't duplicate it it's useless to us so there's really two phases to the project going on there it's understanding what we're looking at and then once we understand it is can we duplicate it with earthly materials and earthly technology and you know unless we've got a handle on both of them all that technology is useless to us and if it turns out we can't do that, all we have is one single prized possession that we have to take care of, and that's it. After all, I would probably have played along for a longer time. Um, I would like to have known a little bit more about the technology and uh, probably kept quiet if I could have, um, and possibly never have said anything. Uh, I almost wish I had done that. You know, it, it's uh, <laughs> it's really only caused headaches and problems. But um, I believe if I was given the opportunity again to go back in time and redo it, I think I pretty much would have just shut up and gone along with the program. I would have much preferred that instead of the Navy or whoever it was uh, that handpicked a few renegade scientists here and there, 
that they turn it over to some more qualified people. Obviously, I was not the most qualified person on a propulsion or field propulsion or anything of that sort. I was just some guy. I mean, they could have picked, I could have named 10 or 12 other guys that were more qualified than me. But, um, you know, if they turned it over to the scientific community and not just a couple guys here in the United States, I mean, you need a large group of people in a large lab to research what's going on there. Uh, not a little quiet installation. It's the, it's the security itself that prevents them from getting anywhere. I mean, it, it, they never do work hand in hand. You can't have a, a military mind. Science itself must communicate. You have to have a free exchange of ideas. That's how things progress. And when you clamp down on a security system like that, where you work in isolated groups and ideas cannot be exchanged, you don't get anywhere. And that's, that's the problem they have. Well, I'm not really involved in any of that stuff anymore. That's kind of put behind me. Um, I have my own businesses that I work at, uh, some computer graphics, uh, some consultation, um, other technical jobs, uh, radiation detectors, and a few other things like that. Um, so really, I just go about my life, and that's you know something that happened that was fantastic, and and it's over. But uh, it's kind of hard to shake it loose. But eventually, I will, and that'll be that. I think all the surveillance and everything stopped. I don't think anyone's bothering to monitor me. I've, I've said everything that I know. It's been all over the place, so it's kind of a, a done deal. As far as whether or not there are any craft out there, I believe you know they were out and gone in probably the late 89, early 90. And the only thing people see now out there are you know, either flares or planes coming into land. But uh, that's about it. I was never interested in flying saucers as a child. Science fiction, you know, I watched Star Trek, I guess, with everyone else back then. But uh, for the most part, you know, I didn't even believe in flying saucers up until I was employed at S4. I couldn't help at one point in my discussions with, privately with General Secretary Gorbachev. When you stop to think that we're all God's children, wherever we may live in the world, I couldn't help but say to him, just think how easy his task and mine might be in these meetings that we held if suddenly there was a threat to this world from some other species from another planet uh, outside in the universe. We'd forget all the little local differences that we have between our countries, and we would find out once and for all that we really are all human beings here on this earth together. Well, I don't suppose we can wait for some alien race to come down and threaten us, but I think that between us, we can bring about that realization. Thank you all. God bless you all.